If you're watching this video, there's a good chance that you've tried and struggled with LiveLink XR. Now, it's not necessarily Unreal's fault that this is such a difficult to use system, but the SteamVR platform wasn't really set up for what we're trying to use it for, and it can be difficult to develop applications that work in a way that we expect out of a professional system. But there is an alternative, and today I'm really excited to show you guys something that I've been working on for the last several months. Let me introduce you to Reality Field. At its heart, Reality Field acts as a universal translator for tracking, camera, and lens data, and allows you to easily build virtual production workflows in just a few clicks. Today, I'm going to show you how you can use it as a wholesale replacement for LiveLink XR and pass both Vive Tracker and controller data to an entire cluster of render servers in only a few minutes. Let's get started. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is head on over to lowledvirtual.com slash realityfield. Here, you can download a trial or subscribe to the beta. Once it's installed and you've activated it, we're going to see this splash screen. In this case, we're going to enable both Vive Trackers and SteamVR because I want to show you guys how you can pass controller data as well. We'll hit begin and immediately we can see our trackers. So we'll simply click the Vive Tracker here and we will load the included Unreal Engine preset. Now an optional but exciting step is we can actually frame synchronize the output. So I have a deck link card in my computer and I've connected a feed from my camera through to the card. And here I can select the input. And when I enable it, the output from Reality Field will actually be synchronized to the frame cadence of the camera. This works for any tracking system, including SteamVR. All tracking systems in Reality Field are conformed to a common access system, which means that we can develop with one tracking system and swap to another at any time. And as long as we use the same output preset, they'll always work in the way we expect. And if that's all you need to do, then you're good to go. We can see in the live link output that there's a default output on localhost at port 20,000. And if we hop it over to Unreal, we can see going in the live link interface that that is the default port. So if we hit OK, we can immediately see that we are getting both our tracker and our controller. Now you can use these live link sources like any other live link sources in the editor. Simply drag a any cam into your scene, add a live link controller component, and then select the source. Now you'll see that we're getting tracking immediately, but it may not be what you're looking for. It's probably not in the right spot and it may not be facing the right direction. And the reason for that is because we haven't told Reality Field what zero is yet. So to fix that, the first thing we need to do is put the tracker at a zero point, which if you're on a stage, you've probably already marked out. Then we just need to go into Reality Field, twirl down the axis adjust and hit zero. And right away, you can see that everything is straightened out. If you connect a camera to it, and we'll cover this in a later tutorial, you can also get things like white balance, tint, ISO, and shutter speed also passed through LiveLink. Now let's have a look at the controller. This is a bit of a special case, and we can see that we have both a tracker and a controller version of this source. In the plugin content folder, we're gonna drag the controller sample into the scene, and we're gonna go ahead and set the LiveLink source. Now, an important note here is we need to hop on into the blueprint and change the source in the blueprint as well. That trips people up pretty often. You can look at the default blueprint here just to get an example of how to read the data, but immediately you'll see that as I move the joystick on my index controller, I can move the light around, and as I pull the trigger, I can adjust the intensity. This should work with any controller through SteamVR, and the buttons, joystick, or trackpad, and trigger are all mapped. And of course, if you're dealing with a larger setup, you can specify more machines to send the data to. There is an unlimited amount of trackers and machines supported, so the sky's the limit. Have fun, guys.